Hello, this is Yaakov Kronenberg from Jerusalem, and tonight we'll be doing another class on a series of classes on Capricorn Ascendant, Saturn and the Different Signs. Uh, tonight we'll be doing Saturn in Gemini. Saturn in Gemini for a Capricorn Ascendant can be a little... Let's start with the good side of it. The good side of Saturn in Gemini is that Saturn is a very, very heavy planet, very cold uh, in Gemini, it works quite well. I remember my teacher used to like Saturn in Gemini because he says uh, Gemini is a light sign and it, it lightens up the the Saturnian nature. I know I have a daughter. I'm a I'm a Capricorn rising. I have a daughter who's a Gemini rising, and she lightens me up. You know, she's like. Uh, She's always moving around and flowing, and and she lightens me up. It, it's nice. And see, uh, Saturn and Gemini is a, can be a nice combination. Uh, again, also, if, if a Capricorn, for example, if a Gemini person, Gemini's always want to help the Capricorn. You get a person with a Gemini ascendant, uh, they fall in the sixth house of Capricorn, in the house of service. So you see right away, a, a, a Gemini person, a Gemini ascendant, always wants to help the... Uh, Capricorn. They feel in a way inferior to the Capricorn and, and feel like they have to serve him. Right? Because then... Uh, so the Gemini is... Um, but the Gemini is a nice sign. A Gemini in Capricorn is a plus in that sense. On the other hand, uh, Saturn in this case, in a Capricorn chart, Saturn will fall in the, house, in the sixth house, the house of ill health, the house of servitude, of uh, government work, uh, the work conditions of the person. And so uh, so it's in the sixth house, it could somehow be connected with um, health problems in a certain way. Uh, Capricorn uh, will say, for example, the or the skin, the knees, uh, things like that. And uh, Gemini rules the lungs, um, uh, the chest area. So there could be, you know, problems in, in uh, also the Capricorn rules, uh, all the bones and the bone structure and the back. And so all of those areas, there could be a tendency towards weakness that would have to be, you know, confirmed by other indications in the chart. And I never, never learned from just one indication itself because you have Saturn and Gemini in the sixth house, means you can have like you know serious health problems in those areas. Doesn't necessarily mean that at all. I've seen people with that combination that were quite healthy, but uh, there's a tendency towards weakness in, in those areas. So there's going to be um, you will probably be advised to, to you know to take care in those areas to to work on them. But again, you always have to check the condition of Saturn, who's the dispositor of Saturn, what aspects Saturn receives to determine how difficult it is. Tonight I'll show you a chart of somebody who had Saturn in Gemini and it was conjoined Mars. So that definitely can be an indication for operations. Mars is the knife and the, it's connected to Saturn and it's in the sixth house. We'll talk about that in a little while. But in any case, a person who has Capricorn in the in the Saturn in the Gemini in the sixth is going to want to help people, right? Uh, they're going to want to help people because they they feel somewhat inferior to other people because the ruling planet is in the house of servitude. They feel like they have a nature of like a servant, and so they want to help people, and they're going to want to help people in the Gemini. But they're going to want to get ahead because they're a Capricorn ascendant. Never forget that they're going to want to get to the top. They're going to want to get to the top by helping people, by serving people. But, you know, it's a good indication for uh, for somebody to help people. And you're going to have to look for a career connected, you know, what area be probably connected with Gemini and Saturn, the two of them together and the aspects it makes. Um... It's excellent for communication. Maybe they want to be, you know, communication expert, uh, salespeople, things like that. It could be all sorts of things. Um, but especially, there's going to be an interest in communication, writing, um, graphics, uh, in those areas. 
Um, tonight I want to do it somebody else, though. I want to do a chart of a very famous woman uh, from the past. Uh, she was actually a top flight athlete. Her name is Billie Jean King. She was actually a, a tennis champion in the world at uh, one time. Top woman tennis player in the world. Uh, I don't know too much about her, but uh, let's try to do a little bit, look at the chart. Uh, Uh, so she's a Capricorn rising, and and she's got Saturn in Gemini. Now in her chart, Gemini Saturn is going to fall in the fifth house, uh, which is the house of uh, actually it's one of the things that rules a sport. It rules you know entertainment, um, romance, and sports and um, theater things like that, investments. And so she had it in the fourth conjoined Mars, right? So it's going to be, and Uranus. So she was very, very uh, interested from an early age in athletics, right? Because uh, the Mars is uh, the sports, the sports person, right? And connected to Saturn. And she got involved in tennis, and she went on to be. She must have worked very, very hard at her career. To be successful, Saturn Mars indicates very hard work, and Uranus there, also. Um, it's interesting. She was uh, she was uh, one of the first uh, lesbian uh, athletes to come out as a lesbian. You see that very difficult fifth house. He's got you know basically two malefics there, Saturn and Mars, and. Um, the Uranus is known as the, um, the sign of the lesbian, right? They, 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 they want freedom, so it's hard for them to have a real relationship, so, you know, with the opposite sex. Because there you lose your freedom and more. And so she, but she had uh, that, and, and she had a very powerful fifth house, because she had three planets in the fifth house even though they're working for the 6th, and she had the ruler in the 11th house, which is also connected to sports. It's by ricochet to the 5th house. It has a lot of the influences of the 5th house, and she had the Mercury there conjunct the sun, which is fame, right? So she got a lot of fame through sports. You see, she had five planets connected in in that area of life, romance, sport, uh, things like that, and she that was really her area of life was the sporting world and, and she was known for, you know, a lesbianism, whatever, and she became an activist in it, I think, even. In any case, though, uh, talking about what we talked before about Saturn being connected with uh, accidents, uh, illnesses, and things like that, so she has really our Saturn is, if the chart was correct, if it wasn't distorted, she would have Saturn and Mars in the sixth house. So in a general way, it's going to work for her sixth house also, and she has uh, the two malefics there in the sixth house. When you have one malefic, it might something might happen. When you have two malefics, already there's going to be a greater chance of something happening. And she has basically three malefics because also the Uranus is there. If you want to call Uranus a malefic. Uh, but in any case, so the uh, Mars is the knife, and it's connected to Saturn. Saturn, uh, the major rulership, is the knees, and she had four, at least four knee operations. What I what I know from 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 reading a little bit about her, so you see that also in her chart, and she must have been a very sensitive woman, also like. Uh, we just saw in Dustin Hoffman, so she got the Moon Neptune very. Uh, very tightly conjunct uh, on the on the ninth in the ninth house. There's going to be a indicates a lot of travel in her chart, a lot of sensitivity. Um, interesting chart, and I thank everybody for listening.